Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the weekly update from the Ashland Hawkwatch in Hocassin, Delaware. Today is November 22nd, 2024. You can tell from the photo that it's really starting to look like winter. All of the trees have lost their leaves except some of the oak trees and a few others. And the weather has really been a mix the past week, but I think the overall theme is that the Hawkwatch is really starting to slow down as we come up on the end of the season. Let's take a look at some of the photos from the past week. Let's start off with this beautiful adult red-tailed hawk. We see the belly band and the dark patagial bars that red tails show, and we know it's an adult because of the dark trailing edge to the wings and the red tail. And this bird is on the more heavily marked end of the spectrum. We can see it's got a pretty big and dark belly band and also a dark throat. So this is possibly the northern subspecies. Here we have another really nice looking heavily marked red-tailed hawk. Again, we see that belly band and the dark patagial bars, but this one is a juvenile, so we do not get the bold trailing edge to the wings or the red tail. We've been getting some nice looks at bald eagles recently. Here we have a nice adult bald eagle, and I really like the way that the light was hitting this bird. Here's a raptor with a long tail, kind of long skinny wings, lanky looking overall, and an owl-like facial disc. This is a northern harrier. And we see that it's unmarked underneath and here in the patagial areas and quite orange. That indicates that it's a juvenile. I took advantage of my day off and went downstate with Kim to see a snowy owl that was reported in the dunes at Cape Henlopen State Park. Although I think this bird was just a one day wonder. I don't think it's been reported since last weekend. And it seems like there's a few snowy owls starting to show up in the region. I've seen reports from Pennsylvania and other surrounding states. So keep an eye out. This could be a good winter for snowy owls. Here we have a large dark raptor. So we should be thinking eagles or vultures. And we see this bird has a big feathered head. So we should be thinking eagles. But which eagle is it? Bald eagle or golden eagle? For that, we look at where the white is and we see that there's a lot of white throughout the whole underside of the body, which is a trait of an immature bald eagle. And also the size of the head is quite a large head, another good field mark for immature bald eagle. Here we have a hawk that's shaped like a flying cross. We see a really long tail. We see long wings that have rounded wing tips, not pointed like we would see on a falcon. So we should be thinking the Accipiter genus, or if you're following the updated taxonomy, possibly the Aster genus. And looking at this bird, we see that it's orange on the underside of the body, indicating that it's an adult. Looking at the overall shape, we see that it's kind of big and lanky looking. The wings are held out very straight. Looks kind of stretched out, real long tail. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. And one thing I would say is that in this photo, you might look at the head and say, well, it doesn't really look like a huge head like a Cooper's hawk would show. And I get that sense sometimes when you're looking at them from a distance that the head doesn't look as big as you might be expecting it to look. Sometimes it's just the angle of the photo and other things. But just from the overall posture of the bird, uh, this is definitely a Cooper's hawk. And in fact, you can even see that the outer tail feathers are slightly shorter. You get a hint of that rounded tail and you can see the white undertail cover it's fluffed out a bit as well so adult cooper's hawk here's another adult cooper's hawk that's perched in a tree and looking at this bird you can see that the back of the neck is pale so it's kind of a capped appearance you have the dark here on top of the head but then it's a lighter color to the back of the neck before you get to the actual back and wings of the bird and looking at the tail of this bird you might say well that looks pretty squared off but keep in mind that the outer tail feathers which you want to see if they're the same length or shorter, actually tuck underneath when they close their tail like this. So you're not seeing those outer tail feathers. You're really only seeing one or two feathers here, period. So you can't really go off the shape of the tail when it's completely folded like this, but all of the other field marks look good for adult Cooper's hawk. Here's another raptor perched in a tree, which gives you an idea of what kind of days we've been having if even the hawks are refusing to fly. Looking at this bird overall, what do we see? Well, we see a belly band here. Very clean upper breast, but a very distinct belly band. And looking at the tail, we see some banding to it. This is a juvenile red-tailed hawk, and this one has flown in and perched relatively close to us a few times, so seems a bit tame. Here's a hawk that has a very distinctive plumage and should be easy to identify. This is an adult red-shouldered hawk. And here's a look at the underside of the same adult red-shouldered hawk. Notice all the orange coloration, and then into the wings and the tail, you have this black and white patterning. And you can even get a hint of the translucent crescents that it has near the wingtips. 
This bird isn't a hawk, but it's nearly as big as one. This is a woodpecker. In fact, it's our largest woodpecker, the pileated woodpecker, or pileated. Let me know in the comments which way you say it. I usually say pileated, but I won't be offended if you say pileated. And we see that this bird has a red mustache, indicating that it is a male. And here we have a pileated woodpecker in flight, and they're just spectacular with their large size and the white highlights that they have both on top of the wing and to the underside. And we see that this is a different bird. This one does not have the red mustache. It's just a black mustache indicating that it is a female. And there were actually three of them that were together. They were in the trees and then they flew across one after the other. So pretty cool to confirm three of them together. Here we have the top side of a raptor. We see a long tail and long skinny wings. And perhaps the most distinctive field mark, we see a white rump. This is the top side of a Northern Harrier. And here's another flying cross. Again, we see a long tail and long wings and a large head. This is another Cooper's hawk, but this one is a juvenile. You can see it's much more brown and white overall with some brown teardrop streaking concentrated on the upper breast. Juvenile Cooper's hawk. Let's take a look at hawk count to see the numbers from the past week. And starting on the 16th, you can see we had just over 100 birds, but after that, the days have been relatively low, 20, 70, 41, 18, 12, and then today I'm recording this a little bit early because outside it's snow showers and rain showers. So no hawk watch being conducted today. Um, looking at the species that we've been getting, we're still getting a few dozen turkey vultures here and there, some bald eagles, a few harriers and exhibitors moving. And we had a couple days where red shoulder numbers were still good, 17 red shoulders and 24 red tails on the 16th. But even those numbers have started to drop the last few days. So we're coming into the last week of the Hawk Watch. The last day of the season is November 30th, which is a week from tomorrow. So we're kind of coming into the home stretch. A lot of the numbers are starting to get very low. But if we get good winds, which it looks like we're going to get some pretty strong west-northwest winds the next few days, we can still get some movement, although I think uh, we're kind of beyond the hope of any really, really big days, but maybe we'll get one more Golden Eagle to finish off the season. Hopefully it's been a really low year for Goldens. We've only had four so far, which is the lowest season ever. I think the record low previously was five. So really low year for Broadwings this year, really low year for Golden Eagles, and we'll see how all of the other species end up as we finish the last week at the Ashland Hawk Watch. So I hope you can come out and visit us one more time up on the hill. From Lake O'Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.